All right. So let's dive into this. Uh, the accelerator. What is the accelerator, uh, and what does it have to do with the NFT lab? So the accelerator is this program that we've put together for our community, and it's something that we've had for about the last year or so. And basically, what it is, it's a place where our community members, who are creative professionals, uh, can come together and work and develop both their brand and their own personal uh, their own personal story around the work that they're doing, and find ways to position themselves in better economic opportunities. Uh, we had been primarily launching programs around some of the products that we've sold. Core, which many of you guys are familiar with, which is a brand strategy framework. Um, Fire, which is a new product that we have coming around that is around purpose, values, uh, and superpowers. And then finally, Flow, which is about how teams can work together uh, using agile, as a, using principles of agile. Well, um, when we decided to make this pivot in or this shift into nfts uh the big challenge for us was uh how could we do this as a community um how could we do this in a place that was going to deliver value you know on a weekly basis to our community in the same way that our accelerator program can do that um and you know what how does it tie into our story so i kind of gave you the background on our story um but now i kind of want to talk about why the nft is becoming a thing and it's not because you know, there's all of this hype, which is important. Um, but the reason that we brought it around is because we believe that it's the first step uh, for creative to start to make value in the space, right? Um, jumping into a lot of the other interesting things, tokenization, uh, the DAO, um, or trying to build, you know, a platform into, um, you know, some sort of web utility. Uh, these are all awesome ways that the Web3 is going to evolve, but what is the simplest way that just any creative, no matter what kind of work that you're doing, if it has some creative output, how can we get you involved in the Web3 space and NFTs is that path. So we put together the NFT lab. The way that it works is uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's an hour and a half session. For Tuesdays from 5 to 7.30, what we'll be doing is going through discovery. So we'll be talking about live case studies. We'll be talking about actual projects that have launched. We'll be talking about the fundamentals uh, so that you can program your own NFTs. So you can, you know, have uh, a discerning eye when you're looking at what marketplaces that you want to launch or, or how you want to take your NFT into the market. And then on Thursdays, we're going to have lab where we actually, through live uh, co-working, go through the fundamentals. So if you don't have a wallet, we'll walk you through and set up a wallet. If you're really concerned about security, you need to understand how to set up your VPN or you know how to build multiple accounts in a MetaMask or any of the basics that will really help you get up and running, we'll be doing those things. Um, if we wanna break down you know, some of the principal ways or platforms where you can mint and the challenges of minting and what does minting, you know, a thousand piece generative art piece look like as opposed to minting, you know, a video or a song, right? We're going to go through all of those things and we're going to handle those things together. Uh, and this is really a place where you can learn and earn together. So uh, let's talk a little bit about our agenda. We've gone through the pre-show. I gave you the Ahoy. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about code of conduct real quick, which is uh, today's session is going to be primarily a conversation and so what that means is it's important that we use some gestalt principles or gestalt principles excuse me and the way that it works is it's like this um i cannot tell someone else what to do but i can tell somebody an experience that i've had or a first-hand experience that i've seen for example i don't have uh, a board a yacht club NFT. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you what it's like to mint that. What I have seen is I've seen somebody post it for sale. I've seen somebody transfer it in between their wallets. So I can talk about those experiences, but I've never minted one. I don't own one. So I could never say, Hey, I would do it's not happening. So I got to keep it 100. Please on your behalf, keep it 100. Um, and then we're going to move into the drop-in. So the drop-in is a little bit about 
who you are, where you're at, why you're here, and what are your uh, questions around the NFT space. And then we're going to have an open convo. We're going to talk about some of these challenges. We're going to talk about some of these curiosities that you have. Um, we're going to share from our experiences and the cumulative knowledge that we have. Then we're going to dive into a preview of the syllabus uh, for the NFT lab. So the goal is for it to run monthly and to be based around the fundamentals. And every month it's just updating with the latest, you know, techniques and, you know, protocol on the web and how people are learning. So every month you'll get this learning opportunity. Um, and then we'll end with the upload. So what today's session was like for you, um, if there's anything that you would share, any feedback for us, and if you're interested in signing up, you guys can sign up then. So that's all said. Let's dive into the drop-in. So our drop-in is how we like to check in with you and kind of see where you're at. Um, we always start with your name, location, what do you do? And what do you want to get out of today's NFT Labs preview? So I'll share and then we can popcorn. Uh, if you'd like to drop in, kind of raise your hand and I'll bring you onto the stage. And then for our folks that are on stage, we'd love to have you drop in. So let's dive in. Uh, I'm Keone, I'm located in downtown LA. Uh, I am a brand strategist turned Web3 adventurer. Um, and catalyst for the system. And what do I want to get out of today's NFT lab? Um, I would like to get, you know, a feel for where the community is at, uh, for some of the challenges that you guys have, um, and an understanding of how I can better provide those resources for you and give you guys a space to grow using NFTs. And I'm complete. We've got Brian. So Brian. Drop in, brother. Hey, everybody. Hey. Good to see you guys. Uh, my name is Brian Jimenez, and uh, I am a brand strategist as well, uh, turned uh, podcast producer, um, but also uh, been dabbling in the NFTs space for just a little bit uh, since about mid last year. Um, even though I, I actually had uh, seen the advent of NFTs about six six years ago, um, but I didn't have a community who had the vision to see where it was going to go, uh, so I, I didn't do anything with it at that time. Uh, but what I'm looking to get out of this is to, uh, you know, be able to collaborate and uh, see how um, we can make interesting happens with making interesting, interesting things happen with NFTs together. Um, and, and capitalize on the opportunity of this growing space, uh, not just in the art space. There's many other areas of NFTs that's going to have an impact. So uh, I'm Brian, I'm complete. Thank you for that drop in, Brian. Tino. Hey, everyone. So I'm Tino. I'm located in uh, Mid City, LA. I'm a uh, business designer. So I try to. Uh, help businesses with creative and UX in uh, brand strategy. And what I want to get out of today's session is how, you know, what is NFT, like the basics of it. Um, I dabbled in it just, uh, you know, investing in it uh, almost blindly. But now I want to um, be a creative in the space and I want to, um, you know, not only design in the space, but I want to see how my, you know, stories, my ideas, my, um, you know, legends that I create in my mind can be, uh, you know, minted as NFTs, because I think that there's opportunities that beyond uh, the scope of our imaginations that we can, um, you know, mint and and build projects upon so um i'm working with some folks uh here some collaborators myself and we're getting together we're putting our minds together and we're hoping that the nft lab is something that can help us uh you know formulate a plan but we need a base and so 
uh, we're hoping to learn that here. My name is Tino and I'm complete. Thank you for that, Tino. Sergio. What up, what up? Sergio Ariza here from La Ciudad de la Furia, Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm a brand strategist to pay the bills. I'm a workshopper for the trills and Web3 and NFTs is what fulfills. So what I want to get out of today's session, I think I just want to open a space, a conversation to, you know, be, be aware of what's happening. I don't want uh, or, or I don't pretend that everybody's going to leave the session and just know what's an NFT or what are the different networks and all that. I just want to, people to go to bed thinking about what's possible and how this is going to be a profound change in behavior, in consumers, in companies. And that is something that we have to, to keep an eye on. Even if we are photographers, just graphic designers, UX strategists, or teachers in a school, whatever, this is going to change things at the deepest level that we can imagine. Um, so that's what I want to to plant on people's head. I I don't care about the technical, the concepts, the you know all that that um, jargon and stuff. I just want people to get a grasp of what's coming in a social. Um, Yeah, in a social, I don't know. You know what I mean. But that's it. I'm Sergio and complete. Just want you to have a good time today. You know, thank you for that, brother. Uh, Miss Iwana, what up? Hi, I'm Miwana Balkan from Brasov, Romania. And we serve brands that work with ethically sourced uh, and regenerative, <laughs> regenerative resources. Um, we do design and uh, brand strategy uh, with an em emphasis on packaging design. And I want to be, I want everyone that's here and including myself to be part of the 3% that knows what blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs are, so that we are for once the early adopters and the ones that are going to build legacy. And I want to bring also a female vibe. It's a bit male orientated. No offense, I know, because it's from gaming business and everything, you know. Uh, and I want to for empowerment for uh, people that don't have material uh, opportunities yet to create communities and own NFTs and own spaces in blockchain and play to win whatever that gets us to through the threshold and you know helps us uh, find opportunity and abundance and actually. I'm very excited to join the NFT lab because I went through Accelerator, which for me was life changing. And I want to understand how it can apply to our storytelling tool called Animus. And I'm ready to actually go. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share. I'm Ioana and I'm complete. Thank you, Ioana. Awesome, guys. Those are some really great drop ins. So what I'd like to do is to move from the drop in and to dive into, uh, you know, our conversation for today. And the way that I'd like to open it up is to start with what are just some of the questions that we have in the space? You know, like what are the things that are top of your mind when you guys, um, when you guys talk about NFTs and you talk about Web3? Um, we had an awesome chat with, um, I'm trying to think what was his name uh mark mark yeah early on and you know he's he's someone that's been in the space for a little bit and you know for him his question was really about how to bring web3 value to business and sergio you talked a little bit about that right you know consumer behavior is going to change fundamentally um this is you know a, a monumental pivot in just the way that we are defining our, our online experiences, our, our URL experiences. So he had that really great topic and we're gonna dive into that in a little bit. What I'd like to hear is from the rest of the audience. We also um, have a question from, yeah. from Bernardo Coelho. Should I bring him up? 
Bernardo, yeah. do you want to uh, ask the question in person? You're allowed to talk. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Bernardo, Bernardo. Hello? Yeah. Go for it, man. Welcome to you the listening? stage. Yes, we are. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm Bernardo. I'm, I'm, I'm a photographer for from Lisbon, Portugal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just started to NFT a week ago, and I don't understand uh, what what uh, how how can I guarantee that uh, the picture is uh, from the author and not copy from uh, some place on the internet? I I don't understand the author rights on F NFT. And okay, so that's me, that's provenance. Yeah. There you so, go. so everyone is able to 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 do whatever they want with the, mm -hmm. the image that are available on, on the internet. I don't get it. Yes. So you can choose the rights. So who has creative rights and how it can be used? We'll we'll definitely talk about that, and that's a great question. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to ask a lot of the topics and questions and ideas that we have and then we're going to spend the next 30 minutes we're going to try to get through as many of them as possible um, in this session and if we couldn't get to it in this session we'll definitely get to it in the next one which will be wednesday at 11 30. so uh thank you so much for that question and uh, thank you i can't much. wait to can't wait to share a little bit about it and our thoughts uh questions for anybody else Come on, folks, don't be shy. Yeah. You can comment in the Q&A or ask, uh, raise a hand and we'll bring you on live. Mm -hmm. Not, it doesn't matter how basic you think the question is. Yeah. Basically, you can ask like, what's an NFT? Or how do I interact with it? Where do I buy it? Or who can make it? I mean, whatever question you have. We have a question here. How do other artists participate in the NFT space? say startup companies or non-profits okay that's a good question yeah. how non-artists can participate mirna wants to know which marketplaces we recommend for beginners ruth santos raised her hand ruth you want to come you want to to yeah ruth come to the stage ruth welcome to the stage Hello, hello, all. I'm Ruth. I'm a photographer living and based in Venezuela. Um, I think my primary question is, um, what exactly is exactly are the NFTs, and um, how can I begin with? Uh, I I've read a little bit. And I hope this this um, this class <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, gives me a little bit of of, of ideas of, of where can I begin with with this all all this little uh, huge world. <laughs> yeah. No, it's <laughs> a great question. Thanks. Yeah, Ruth, uh, if I may ask, are, are you an artist? Yeah, I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer well. and a filmmaker. Uh, filmmaker, actually. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like we're getting a lot of photography in the space. That's exciting. Yeah, at least free. <laughs> and they are taking mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And I think, you know, right now, that's like one of the emerging uh, spaces in the NFT market is photography uh, and music. Music and photography are really uh, growing. And I've been seeing a lot of really interesting approaches to the way that they're bringing their NFTs to market. They're popping up, yes. Yeah. We just need a, a big headline, like, I don't know, Peter McKinnon means it's an NFT, something like that, you know, and that's yeah. going to be... Uh, a snowball effect. Right. Same with the same with people. 
um, um, the 3D rendering is seen. Yeah, it, I mean, we knew that 3D rendering was going to be a thing, I believe. Um, but uh, as a whole, like the challenge of it, uh, like it was just about the porting. Like we knew what it was going to look and feel like, but all of these other spaces that really challenge you to isolate or rely on one framework of senses is is where I think interesting stuff is going to play. The innovation. Okay, so we've uh, got a few... Keone, we have a one. We have one from Adriana, um, and she wants to know uh, again a little more about the basics. Uh, but mm -hmm. she also wants to know how to work with, um, you know, to seek opportunities uh, for self self expression, and also to work with the community, like mm -hmm. uh, and shared values, intentions. Um, and things like that so it's also bringing in uh i think we were talking about this in the pre-show about like working um together in, in community and that's something that i uh talked about in my in my drop-in um i believe like it's something that i'm interested in as well like you know i feel like myself I, as well i i need to, i want to work together with a team you know um I have ideas, I know what I want to do, but I feel like I, I really want to work with a team on this. Like, so I, I feel that that um, that question that Adriana has there too. Yeah, and I think that's a great question and we'll answer that at the end. And I think that'll be a perfect segue into um, the opportunities that are presenting in the space. Um, you know, Web3 has, to me, I have looked I've typically looked at the space in which I operated up until I understood Web3 as operating in a place where I was in a forced hierarchy, just because the way that capitalism operates, just the way that you know our economic systems are structured. Um, and so that made things very, very difficult uh, you know, for me to, um, to find comfort working in just about any organization. Typically, I've been the owner of my company or I've been leading startups, so I've been at the top. So I felt kind of strained and it feels very extractive and it feels less about partnership. And then moving into partnership, you know, you're still operating in these same standards of who owns what and where and why can't we just be in a pool of shared resources? These are all challenges that Web3 addresses. And so I think that's a great way to talk about Mark's first question. So Mark. You know, uh, go ahead and raise your hand, man, and let's talk a little bit about your your um, your question: how how to bring Web three value to businesses? And uh, let's talk about it, man. For you, what is the vision that you see uh, when that idea comes to mind? Hey, um, I guess the vision is there's going to be a way to deliver that value that say like a small business can provide but in a reality where i guess in reality where they can actually use turn around and use that because right now there's not as much use cases for like nfts for like a small business i guess or i mean i guess there could be but i guess it's it's how can i deliver that in a way that's meaningful to them and helps everybody grow um in a way that serves the people that are consuming the content So I have some thoughts on that, you know, and I think it's really related to structure and governance a little bit behind ideas. But 100%. I love, yeah, I know. You know that's where the struggle is. Yeah, right. Um, but does anybody have any thoughts before you know I share some of the things that come to mind? Yeah, I have some thoughts about about that, especially with small businesses, as Mark mentioned. Um, so yeah, the question is basically how does the mom and pop of restaurant leverage Web three? So mom and pop uh, restaurants is going to have a customer base that is going to change uh, generationally. Um, yeah, it's going to have to adapt to the new social norms. So it's basically unavoidable as Thanos, the fact that they are going to have a space on this web tree stuff. So the way you bring value to them, that is basically the question it's almost the same, I would say, again, than the way that we bring value to small businesses with brand strategy, just bridging the gap, you know, 
because you cannot provide value to them with Web3 stuff if you cannot explain them why will they need it and what can be done with this in their business. So the specifics, the implementation and all of that, that's coming later. But the main way that you are going to be able to bring value to those small businesses is to by understanding what can do what can web3 do for their business and and just being able to assemble a team and implement it that that's it i mean you need to 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 own the concept and being able to communicate it to small business owners that's the way we create value no matter what's the the the, the, the issue no matter it's if it's brand strategy web3 web4 whatever it's just owning the concept and being able to communicate it. Yeah, you know, and uh, does anybody else have any thoughts? Because I'd like to riff off of that a little bit. Um, you know, I had a conversation earlier this week with the founders of, uh, was it Venetian Punks? Crypto Venetians in Venice Beach. And there was, a, there was one of the bicycle guys that drives folks around and we're sitting there and we're talking about this you know like what does the web3 mean and like what is it about and he's his remark to me was all like i don't get you know the nft thing and tokens and and i explained to him you know think about it less like less around the technical concepts and to think about it more on the philosophical concepts the woo woo right um, and that's what I think it makes it really difficult because we we have ten you know over the last hundred years our relationships have become predominantly transactional more and more so with the advent of technology um, and the way that we interact with each other. Um, I always refer to this uh, concept around Dunbar's numbers or Dunbar's number. Now Dunbar's number is it's approximately 150. A psychologist named Dunbar try to identify what is the most deep relationships that a human being can have. It's about 150. And what that kind of talks about or, or infers is we as humans have always been social creatures. We've always been nomadic. We haven't, we can't scale value. We can't have truly a thousand deep friends. It just doesn't make sense. And so that shows that we're predisposed to have relationships, deep relationships with people around trust, right? around our ability to contribute and to be in service. Um, Simon Sinek talks about this in um, Leaders Eat Last. You know, the things that give us autonomy, the things that allow for us to have service and the things that allow for us to be in mastery are where we derive some of our basic biological feelings of self-worth and value and identity around. Now, this is a philosophical and this is a biological construct that I'm saying right now, but basically as a whole, relationships and connection is quite literally the currency. It doesn't matter what the tool is, whether you exchange that value through an NFT, whether you exchange that value through a social token, or whether you exchange that value through, you know, a token of, of you know, value like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And I think what, that's important to share with a lot of these smaller businesses because they thrive in that space, right? So the way that I've looked at how to bring value to businesses, particularly startups and smaller businesses, your business, if it's been around for a while and you're like a, you know, a neighborhood business, it's because you have relationships within the community. And so the challenge that you have for, to get them onboarded in the space is to ask them, how can they track their relationships with their customers, right? Because in a way they're tracking them already. They know when, you know, uh, you know, Bertha comes in that you see that comes in every Tuesday and Thursday to your corner grocery store with her aunt and uncle, and you've seen them and their children grow up since they were yay tall, right? There's been a value of exchange in that, whether through conversation, whether through actually purchasing of goods. Sometimes they may need goods and you're investing into their family and you're providing goods to them, right? You've always done that. You know, the, to me, the concept of Web3 has always existed. It's just, we've been in a world where it's trying to capitalize and extract the value out of it. Now we're like, how can we just bring it back to a place where we can connect again and share something 
of value in between us. I think it starts there. Um, those are the conversations that I've been having around smaller startups. Um, I was talking to my uncle and uh, his neighbor who's in Jamaica, and he's like, so what is this NFT thing, Keone? You know, and I'm just sitting here like, <laughs> like, oh, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know how you've got the friendship, you know, over here with Charlie? Well, it's the same thing. What if you guys had like a special way of sharing that value that didn't account for money, but was as good as money? I was like, well, then ting there don't make sense. I just take him domino set. And I'm like, well, all right, Pop. But <laughs> it's the same thing. That domino set could have been a token. It could have been an NFT. And then he's, you know, can this physical thing be an NFT? Yes, that's a whole other conversation. Um, but those are my thoughts. Uh, Mark, you know, I'd love to get your feedback on that. I think that's a really great explanation. I think I really vibe with kind of the way you were explaining it, how there's always been that value there, whether it's they can't cover for groceries one week and you're just like, yeah, I can help you out like that. But that technically is value being exchanged. Um, I think it's interesting how the actual transition between that value, how you can, well, that's what it kind of Ethereum does, but that's a really, really like you have to shift the way you think to kind of understand that as a business owner and that's kind of the battle yeah and here's the thing i actually think that it will be harder for mid-sized businesses and larger businesses to make the shift into web3 because the way that they've structured their business is fundamentally extractive it sort of requires someone to be in control and someone to take advantage for you to wield control over the way that your service or your product is delivered, right? You know, I'm gonna go back to the very first slide that we opened today's show with in the download and the difference between web two and web three. Like web two, they're expecting for you to get paid based on time. Web three is no, you're gonna get paid for the value, the value that I think you're worth. Completely different mind shift. And our relationships, you know, when you, you talk to like my family and you talk about, you know, an uncle or an aunt and like, eh, he, you know, him tough, but him family, you know, like there's value there. There's, there's that conversation around what there has been contribution back and forth around to trust the ledger of experiences. So for smaller businesses, that's how they've always survived. So for them, you know, there's going to be a platform. There's going to be some tool. Coinvise is an incredible platform for tokenization, you know, and I'm just saying that because we're experimenting with the platform and we're using it ourselves. The point is, there are going to be platforms that are going to allow for these businesses to make that shift a lot easier, right? Like, I don't think that we're that far away from, uh, you know, and if someone's on this, you don't make this, but, you know, some platform where a small mom and pop can hop on, create their own mini token exchange and create their own rewards program around their product or their service or their restaurant or whatever. And then instantly, as soon as the customer comes in, they're taking fiat, they're getting paid back, maybe change as tokens that they can redeem for something else. And then you start tracking the relationship in the exchange. You can have your own internal intranet like around your community. That's absolutely coming. Um, and we also have to keep in mind how early Web3 is. We, we're leapfrogging a lot of the tools that we need, right? It's why wallet experiences are so trash. Like everybody's wallet experience is trash. You know, every, every exchange system is trash because there's these huge gaps in the value delivery system. It'll get better. Kiona, can you yep. make a quick intro into what, what Web3 is, please? Also, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Web3. Um, so. Quick show of hands, because I'd be really curious. How many here on the call knows what Web3 is or has heard of Web3 but doesn't understand? Yeah, interesting. So Web3 is what we're calling this latest iteration of the web. Um, web 1.0 really started with the advent of the internet in the 1990s. Um, and we saw some of the early sites about, you know, mostly being portfolio sites where you would broadcast information. You had the earliest form of social networking, which was forums. 
Um, so if you're on GeoCities, you know, or in any of the, um, the chat rooms, IIR, Q, all of those little things, right? Uh, then you step into Web 2. Web 2.0 was really about the evolution of some of those basic experiences that we had online. So what are some of those Web 2 experiences? They're the things like Black Planet, if you remember that, Asian Avenue, Zanga, uh, MySpace, right? Those were really the sites that really allowed for us to expand and explore the web. And they're significant because there was a change in the way that information was, was, was disseminated or shared. Primarily in Web 1.0, it was one dimensional, right? The larger brands or the companies, they had these websites or they would push information to you. You would go to those places for information. You had to search for those things. That's why search engines and Google were a huge thing. Then you have Web 2.0. Now Web 2.0 is where we as users really started to get our first experience in the creation of content. WordPress dropped. My brother had started a website called Nerd with Swag back in 2005. First black owned tech blog in the world. It was a crazy experience. We're like, oh my God, you mean I can talk about what I really feel about this really whack software video game? Whatever, that was web 2.0. That's also where you saw YouTube come out. We saw Vine, we saw all of these small platforms that allowed for us to create and host our own content. Fast forward to web 3.0. Web 3.0 really was ushered in uh, through the age of um, blockchain networks. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, right? Uh, these are all networks that use these basic principles of transparency of a ledger system, meaning that all information uh, is locked in and tracked and accessible and uh, open access, everyone had access to it, right? So now all of a sudden, we went from principles of I'm going to hold this and just share with you to all of a sudden everything is shared, right? Implicit trust is one of the foundations of us being able to exchange value, meaning whether it's money, we both share the same trust because I trust this piece of paper that has the United States government on it. And you trust this piece of paper that says the United States government on it. So guess what? We both believe that this thing is real and legit and it exists, but it's because of our relationship with the governmental system. Blockchain wants to give that sovereignty away from a government that says this is valuable to each individual, you who bought the token because you believe it's valuable and you exchange it with other people because they think that it's valuable. And now you are a sovereign individual with control over your value and everyone is just using a shared space. It's no difference than you and your friends having your own secret language and key key keying in the club when you see that person or that thing wearing that thing and you're just like, girl, you see what this, you see what they wear, <laughs> right? It's shared language, it's a shared trust. And um, in Web3 is ultimately, and I'll end it on this note, it's ultimately about community. It's about your ability to sit next to someone that you trust and love and say, hey, I believe in this thing, I wanna explore this thing. Do you trust me to explore this thing with me? And can you do it through participation and you just being there and being someone to talk to through exchange of value? Can we invest in this thing together? Our shared ownership, can we own this thing together? And that's Web3. Uh, does that make sense for everyone? You wanna? Yeah, it was Jose's ask. <laughs> you uh, know? Okay, yeah. Because everything happens in Web3. It this is. is the new era, the new era of networking and community. Can I, uh, can I jump in and encapsulate real quick? Please. So the way that, um, and that was a great explanation, by the way, uh, but for those who may need a more condensed version, uh, the way it helps me to understand it is that Web 1.0 is essentially the beginning of, of digital libraries mm. where the information could be out there, right? Uh, and then Web 2.0, was when uh, now you had the ability to, for example, self-publish or share that information, right? Not just access the information, you can actually put some of your information out there. Uh, and that Web 3.0 is now allowing you to basically have control of that data bank of your own information and being able to use it, not in the way that you're told to use it, right? Now you get to decide with the community what you're gonna do with it. Uh, 
uh, whether you're going to give it away or whether you're going to exchange it for some kind of value, right? And that's where things like decentralization and NFTs come in. Um, so this is, it's, it's, it's not just something that the system kind of, oh, this is what we think is happening or this is where we hope. No, this is, this is a major step in uh, the evolution of the internet. Dude, that was so awesome. That was great. That, that was, was great, fantastic, right? man. That was like Captain America, like, bah, 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 I got him on our, all right, let's go. I love that. So thank you for that, brother. Um, and I think that's actually a great way to segue into the next question, which is how can I guarantee ownership of NFT uh, and proof of provenance? Um, and Ruth, was that, were you the one that had asked that question or was it somebody else? Whoever had asked that question, I'd love for you to raise your hand, Bernardo. I think yeah. Bernardo, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bernardo. You're on mute, Bernardo. Yeah. So I'll ask you to unmute. Um, Can you listen now? There yes. you are. Hey. Guy. Hi. How are you? So I don't understand as a copywriter, uh, as a for the copyrights. Imagine that I, I tokenize a picture of mine and the picture is, uh, uh, and the NFT is sold to another person. Can I still use the, the, my photo in a book, for example? Yes, you can. Okay, so I can use the photo in the magazine that was sold as a token. Correct. So you can sell, you can choose what rights you include in the NFT. Some artists will say, I'll give you full rights and full exclusivity and it's out of my hand and you can own it forever. Or they can, you can say, you own this piece and this art and you can display it and own it. But I, as the original artist, return the, retain the right to use it in any of my own books or any of my own collections. That's absolutely something you can do. And, and can I ask another question, please? Yes. So imagine that I, I take a photo of the painting of Mona Lisa. Can I token? Can I make an NFT of Mona Lisa, for example? So that is a, that is public image. So that's a great question. Um, the way that I've understood, and I've actually had a conversation around Jose with some of this, there is a gray area because a you as I understand it, the viewer or your audience would have to understand that it is an interpretation or perspective of the Mona Lisa as you choose as an artist, right? right? If the intent is to make a reproduction of the Mona Lisa and to sell it as a reproduction, then obviously that would be faulty. And, okay. you know, we've seen it time and time again in a lot of projects in the NFT space where somebody steals work, an NBA player tried to do an NFT and just blatantly ripped off a background in Fortnite. And here's the thing, trust and transparency is such an important component of your story as an artist and in the NFT space that when they see that all of these other elements that are not originally yours that you project, you know, project as your own, you know, when you see that, then that breaks the trust. Right. And that breaks the value. And I've just seen a lot of these projects go to zero. So I think what is important as an artist to be clear about is if that is your art and you're trying to present it as interpretation of your view or your perspective of it, you're making some satire against the commodification of art or whatever the case can be. If it's clear in that context, then I don't think that it's a challenge. OK, thank you so much. Very welcome. And you know what? I have a, um, that's actually a great idea. Um, I know I have a local uh, friend who's a lawyer, who's a startup lawyer that works in IP. And you know what? Maybe we should do a session as part of the NFT lab where we have a lawyer come in. Yeah, I was going to. This, this is Jose. I can answer that. Yeah. Very specifically. So if you think of an NFT because it's using an Ethereum address uh, in the transaction and in the management of, you know, where it, where it, basically the provenance of it, like if you shoot the Mona Lisa 
uh, and then you know try to sell it as a as an NFT. First of all, people are going to say like, wait, isn't that the Mona Lisa? Do you actually have the rights for it? So there's still the issue of, um, uh, for an example, one thing that's happening is people that buy, uh, let's say like a CryptoPunk or like a, uh, your your profile, uh, a, an NFT of something that you end up using on as your profile. Some people just copy it and use it. Right now they're trying to build um, uh, you have to have a wallet attached to it in order to be able to post it as your identity. Now that depends on the platform. So the integrate Twitter is about to integrate that into its platform itself. That if you use your thumbnail, uh, if you use an NFT as your thumbnail, you have to have the Ethereum address, the, the address basically your, your, your wallet attached to it. Otherwise you can't use the image. Does that make sense? Yes. So validation uh, of things that are displayed digitally will begin being tied directly into the blockchain. Uh, when it's just an image of something like a photograph, somebody asked that about a photograph. Recently, there was an instance where a photographer who shot this beautiful shot of Hawaii, a road on Hawaii, and it was like one of the most used shots of Hawaii and people were just copying it. She got frustrated because of course, anybody can use the image, but how does she manage takedowns or like you know she's not getty images who has algorithm uh, who has a uh, uh, crawlers searching the web and and embeds inside their images that if they're not available uh if you can't prove that you bought it from getty images getty automatically will probably will take it down or like you know notify you of it uh if you don't have that capacity you can't do anything about it so this person this artist a photographer what she ended up doing was selling the rights for the usage of her image and perpetuity to just in general as an NFT uh, and got $300,000 for it. So it now retroactively, she's getting, you know, uh, uh, all the people that stole her image, she's getting some compensation for it. So, so the NFT provides the transaction and the, and the, and the contract uh, inherently uh, for a piece, the issue of duplication, the issue of, plagiarism, the issue of, um, you know, uh, somebody shooting the Mona Lisa and using it, those still, are, those, those things are still, there's still technology being developed to ensure that that's not happening. But at the end, the, the laws of the land in terms of copyright and in terms of usage are going to apply. Um, so again, the transaction point and the authenticity point, the exchange, it being all on the Ethereum blockchain is what the NFTs provide. Uh, and then the broader uh, usage and, and management of, of rights is something that's developing uh, as we speak. Mm. Thank you for that, Jose. And the mic drop. Um, hopefully that, was that suitable for you? Did that give you anything additional? Brother? Yeah. Yeah, but copyright also depends on the state it's in because it's a bit subject. It's actually subjective. Uh, so some people claim that you have some states claim that you have to alter an image or uh, music a bit over fifty percent, some sixty percent, some eighty uh, percent. Some say that if you classify it as satire and uh, proof that it's uh, proof somehow that it's satire, then you are safe. Then there's also things that are in the common culture of the globe. How do you work around that? Because it's in 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 mainstream in the mainstream media or subcultures. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of challenges with that, but you know we do know that there is progress moving forward, and we are seeing examples of photographers being able to retain some of the value behind their work as in the example that Jose just shared. So, so yeah. And, um, you know, if you guys want to join the NFT lab, one of the things that we'll be doing as part of it is a biweekly update where we're going to be talking about all of the latest stories that are coming out, stories of photographers that are, you know, finding a lot of success in the space and retaining some of the value, just like that case study um, that we shared earlier. 
uh, another great reason to sign up. Um, but we've got a few questions, so I want to try to get through as many of these as possible. Um, the next question is, how do other, how do folks who are other than artists participate in the NFT space, say startup companies or nonprofits? And I believe Themes was the one that asked that question. So Themes. Yep, that's right. If you want to come up to the chat, uh, just raise your hand or I'll bring you up on stage. And uh, let's open that up to the audience members you know, and the panelists. Would you guys like to share some of your thoughts? Sure. Things you want to add something to your question before we dive in? Yeah, I can. I, can you hear me? First of all, yeah. I just want to confirm. Okay. Yes. Um, so I can provide some context, right? Um, so um, along with the work that I do, I'm also a social entrepreneur. And I see that the NFT space provides an opportunity for equitable access to funding. Um, in which a lot of nonprofits and startups are kind of like a big obstacle for them is going through this whole nonprofit industrial complex where they have to keep on getting funding from different avenues but not able to do the work that they intend to. So my question then is is that how do NFTs play for in a role for like access to funding uh, for startups or nonprofits? Like for example, if I like release, a podcast or something do i have to like showcase the cover of that as an nft and then i can sell that or or can people just start you know supporting causes using nfts mm. so i have some there's some interesting platforms out there that are doing some really interesting things in the space particularly around crowdfunding and uh fractionalization of nfts so um like here's an idea, uh, each podcast or a podcast as a whole, uh, an entire season could be sold for an X number of dollars. And you guys would only produce them if you guys could get the full number of funding and everybody that funded it could get a fractionalized ownership of that NFT. So if you could look at your donors and say, hey, donors, I know that typically we would ask for this, that and the other, but what if we did something where our work that I would like for you to, you know, fund if it becomes something of an art piece that you could own at the end of, you know, the season and, you know, it could appreciate in value, then you could resell it potentially on the market. And so instead of just paying me or trying to go through some RFE proposal, you know, NGO process, if you just invested in our startup that makes this thing and here's a result of services, research, et cetera, et cetera, that we've gone on, you could completely circumvent that process altogether and do so with an exchange of value where the thing that you're providing that might go be best for society or awareness or whatever to help push the organization further could also have the added benefit of being a token asset that your investors are investing in and they could get return on that investment. Now that's just a random idea that exists out there, but I'm seeing more and more a lot of creative projects or creative businesses that are fractionalizing ownership, whether through an independent creative piece like an NFT or through a community like a DAO with tokenization. Now, I think you're like sitting on the edge because when I'm thinking about organizations and companies and nonprofits, you're talking about larger organizations as a whole and that brings in a whole host of other challenges that come with that um but those are some ideas that come to mind and i'd love to hear what the audience has to say yeah i have a couple of of um as well ideas and, and i don't know if case studies but things that had happened on that space mm -hmm. so the first thing is that um, non-government and non-profit organizations had a great opportunity with this space particularly um, but the the question is how they can use it to fund projects um, both companies and non-profits organization can use it in the same way so the first step is they have to know the cultural aspect of this whole movement because now when you mint an nft and you want to support a project you have to deliver a roadmap in exchange, a roadmap that can be relatable to certain community. And that way is, that's the way that you can fund a project. 
Uh, there are some use some some case studies that you can check. Um, the time NFT drop that happened this week is one of them. That's an example of a large organization um, organizing an NFT drop to support a cause. In this case, I think it was something related to the environment or something like that. It didn't go as well. Um, you can see why they didn't respect the culture. They they didn't take the, the, the precautions to make everything run smooth, but they did it anyway. There are a couple of other examples that we can look. Um, I can I can share those with you. But the main thing is companies and nonprofits, if they want to join the game, they have to understand the culture. They have to understand that people join the community and participate in the NFT drop because they believe in a promise. This case is not a brand promise or, a, or you know, a, 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 the promise of a product or the promise of a community, the roadmap. Um, the roadmap can be anything you want, but you have to include it because now it's a part of the culture of the people who's participating in this space. That's it. I'm Sergio on complete. Juana. Uh, Fims, can you uh, clarify the question a bit for me? Uh, when you say if you're not an artist, uh, it, does it have to be in the so? So there are startups and nonprofits that hire designers, but maybe you mean with no creative skills involved. That uh, I mean, no illustration skills or photography at the moment. No, I mean, what I'm, I'm clarifying as is that right now in NFTs, it's usually these like digital artworks, right? Yeah. Um, and so then the thing is, is that in these spaces outside of DAO, what is it that a nonprofit or startup can present that can be sold as an NFT? So like, for example, let's say a nonprofit created a special poster right okay to fund their social impact thing yeah so like creating yeah. something that is still physical but providing an opportunity to find some to fund something that is social which in turn helps the community i can yeah, give that, you an that's example. completely the case yeah that's a good clarification Iana. Yeah. that that was that was great so yeah if you make a poster you have a digital version you have a print version you do an event you make some noise you have like a lead up to it it's released as an nft it gets in the crypto press that nonprofit x is selling this really amazing poster from this amazing artist and with the purchase of your nft you will get the uh you will get the uh a vip dinner with that. the artist you'll or... get the piece yeah. you know in the mail all those things remember that an nft is simply the contract and the agreement and the the transaction financially on the ethereum blockchain so it, it, it's recorded and it's non like it's immutable right as a, a non uh, non-fungible, which is the, the definition of NFT, but it's no different than any other token. Uh, the difference is simply that the agreement by me as a patron of that nonprofit to pay $2,000 for that poster as a fundraiser, limited edition of one or limited edition of 20 or sign 20 posters, each is one NFT and we raise $100,000 from that sale. We receive the poster in, in the mail. That's not gonna change, right? The point was that a wallet, a wallet to wallet transaction happened to, to exchange the value. That's the primary thing. So people get all hung up about digital asset versus physical asset. None of that matters. It's simply a transaction point on the Ethereum blockchain that commemorates and has the contract. When I go to an art gallery and I buy uh, a piece, let's say uh, a painting, you know, the, the gallery gives me a certificate of authenticity. I meet the artist. I go to the opening. I get some cheese and wine. I give, you know, the $20,000 for that piece. I take it home. Um, the contract is in the gallery in a, in, a, in a file cabinet. And the money was transacted by a, via my checkbook through Wells Fargo. That All those things had to happen. But the story of the art, the story of the artist, the experience of the artist, all those things had to be conveyed. We, we simply now have a very uh, portable and digital way of doing all of those things uh, inside a, 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 a cryptocurrency environment, inside the Ethereum blockchain. 
That's that's the way to think about it. Themes, I can give you an actual example. So it doesn't have to do with uh, someone doing a piece of art or music or anything like that. So a famous porn star launched a pair of panties into space. And when they come, came back, they sold it and they raised money for um, women's health, uh, specifically reproductive health uh, care. And what I have noticed, a lot of uh, nonprofits and charity based uh, communities are actually launch a coin first and then they create the nfts and digital uh, products that might help to raise funds i i hope that helps yeah that's really helpful thank you yeah um andrea uh she just entered into the chat or maybe she's been here for a while um but she was just having a conversation with musicians around raising uh funds for a live event using nfts um andrea you know if you'd like you know do you want to come on the stage and share a little bit about you know what that mechanism is like and um okay i think now can you guys yeah. hear me yeah we can um, yeah, so I was just in this meeting, so I'm like really excited now. But we were talking about wanting to do live events at first in Panama, mm -hmm. but we wanted to do a lot of animation too, which I'm like not not a, not an animator, right? So we're, I was like, why don't we finance the project? One second, my dog wants to join the conversation, but... Um, we're like, why don't we finance the entire life project with NFTs? And then we'll do the clothing, we'll do the merch and everything for it. But at first, like, let's get to other people uh, on the internet before we launch the entire project itself to see how it goes, what works, what doesn't. And I'm completely well with all this thing. Thank you for that, Andrea. Um, lots of insights there. Uh, and then Brian, and then we'll move on to the next question. Oh, I was raising my hand to answer from the previous, one of the previous questions. <laughs> oh, but, oh uh, good. I forgot what it was now, but I'm sure it'll come up. With. Okay, well, great. You know, let's actually, let's move into the next one because actually I think it suits you. Um, and the question is, how do I begin in the NFC? In the nft space now it was a filmmaker and photographer that had asked but i'd like for you to just share you know what has your early experience been coming into the nft space still me yep oh okay um yeah uh coming into the nft space it was super confusing at the beginning because um, i had an idea of the back in 20 2013 2014 uh, I was having a, a conversation with an art a museum uh, about the potential trajectory for what art could become and that we had to redefine. It was time to essentially redefine what, what we think about what art is. Um, now, I don't necessarily uh, think that uh, NFTs equals art, um, but that's a different conversation. Um, but fast forward to uh you know uh, 2020 about mid 2020 when i started to kind of understand that what what i was talking about back in 2013 2014 uh was now being uh, made possible by this this new technological vehicle which was the blockchain um it, it was really confusing because i had to now um basically unlearn the modes um of transacting value that had been established in the past, right? Which is, you know, for example, people making a transaction by purchasing a product or something like that. Um, and to uh, now make a transition into how does that fit in with community? And so um, I, instead of just kind of thinking about it, I just kind of jumped in to, you know, figure out how to create a wallet. Um, you know, what's the difference between a, a, a digital wallet and a physical wallet? Um, so I went out and got a physical one didn't know what the heck to do with it, but I, I figured it out. Um, and 
So I, I, I know everyone might not have the same affinity for, for risk and might not want to get their hands so dirty so quickly. Um, but when it comes to novelty uh, and innovation, um, sometimes that's kind of the way that uh, you have to risk a little bit just to kind of, um, you know, jump into the unknown and kind of, you know, figure it out. Um, and so that's what I did is I jumped in a little bit. I invested just a little bit to, to play with it. Um, and I started to make the connections and started to, to understand that um, essentially the, the NFTs, um, what it's like Jose was mentioning, it's really the uh, it, it's the, the cryptographic uh, tokenization of it. That's that's really where um, a lot of the value uh, is, tra is transacted. It's not necessarily whether it's physical or digital or an art piece or a physical piece. Um, it's more of a, a, a digital cryptographic uh, contract that's stored in the blockchain. That's that's really kind of what the NFT uh, is without kind of going getting into a different conversation. And so from there, it started to make more sense uh, for me what that meant, uh, for example, with IP, intellectual property, because then you start realizing that when people are talking about smart contracts, some people are thinking that that's the same as a legal contract and that has some kind of validity and it's it doesn't exactly <laughs> translate the smart tracks smart contracts are talking more about code uh and, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the, the legal aspect unless you make it have a legal connection to it so um i kind of jumped in um uh, you know creating a few, some uh, nfts and uh, uh you know uh, collecting a few myself um and it's I was just all these same questions that everyone's asking. I had the same questions uh, and I'm not a guru now. Uh, there's still lots more questions that I have as well, but uh, I've been able to navigate it in a way where um, I wasn't afraid to ask the dumb questions, uh, but I also wasn't afraid to uh, question what I thought I knew. I was able to say, OK, I don't really understand this. You know, I, I might look dumb, um, but I don't know what an entity is. Like I know 10 people have already explained it. I still doesn't make sense to me. And so I had to break it down um, just like the encapsulation earlier um, to say, what is it really? Um, and, and, and that's why Jose, that explanation just a minute ago was, um, it made a lot of sense to me as, as, as well because um, th there is a lot of still confusion as to what it is. And there's a thousand people with a thousand YouTube videos saying, this is what it is. Um, that's why this is so valuable what the system is doing now. Um, this is where we can kind of hash it all out and really kind of understand what it is, what, what, what's the potential, what can be done, how can we do it together, um, and how could we, you know, blast off into the new frontier uh, with the, the, you know, NFTs. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Dude. Super succinct, always insightful. Uh, Brian, make sure that you put your social stuff in the, in the in the chat so folks can follow you and stay abreast of what you're doing. Um, so we are coming up. You know, we plan for an hour and a half of the session, so we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, I just want to you know open up the conversation to the panelists, uh, everyone that's been sitting up here, that's been you know contributing and giving back your feedback and your experiences. Um, do you guys have anything that you guys would like to add as we bring this discovery session to a close? Yeah, I would like to add something. When uh, For me, how do I begin in the NFT space is very broad. So things like asking, do I want to create or invest in NFTs? Do I want one-time NFTs or do I want a community-based NFT that's generative? So that I understand then how to answer, how do I begin in the NFT space? Besides, you know, the obvious things like uh, learning how to mint and uh, create a wallet. Yeah, you know, as Jose says in the chat, there, it's just doing it, right? Participation is super, super important. Um, and, you know, getting involved with the NFT space in the NFT space doesn't necessarily mean that you're building right away. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're investing right away. Um, some of the most powerful things that I did for me to start building relationships and getting familiar in the space was hopping into the discords and asking questions and answering questions 
you know, hop into the Luxo Discord, you know, and talk about contracts and interpretation of white papers and what definitions might mean or should mean or could mean. Um, you know, Twitter is another incredible place. Um, I think the two primary channels uh, for really getting to connect and understand the NFT space is Twitter and Discord, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that, Iwana. And so, um, you know, I want to use this last question that um, Adriana asked, which was, uh, I want to learn basic NFT. Uh, I want to learn about basic NFTs. I want to seek opportunities for self-expression, freedom, and to co-create with community value and intention for a future based in love and respect for each other and Mother Earth. So uh, that's what we're trying to do here at the NFT Lab. And, you know, this entire conversation is really built behind our goals for the NFT Lab and for everyone that's a part of it. Um, our intent is to develop new revenue streams that provide lifetime value to creatives and their community, learn and earn together. The big challenge for most of us that do creative service work um, is that we don't have real investment uh, uh, mechanisms so that the work and our creative impact that we have that will live long beyond us, uh, how do we own a part of that legacy? How do we own a part of that impact? Um, we don't. And NFTs and Web3, we believe, is the way. So what happens when you jump into the NFT lab? So we have some very specific goals and they're built around productivity and engagement in the space. So as opposed to some of the woo woo principled ideas, what we have are really pragmatic ones. Uh, getting your Web3 profile together, um, getting the you know, familiarity around the tools and the marketplaces, um, understanding where the opportunities are happening, um, where are the spaces where you can leverage your creative in the most powerful ways. Um, how to explore the space creatively, what kind of formats are there, what are the new ways that folks are innovating. Networking and ownership, of course, which are the primary things, so how can you build familiarity and start to find access to the spaces that interest you. For example, I'm super curious about the Caribbean diaspora that are doing so much incredible things in the NFT music space. Um, that's the whole community that I've been able to discover and to get involved with um, and really just explore this new digital frontier. So the program overview, very, very clear from the start. Like, why are we doing this? Uh, this is the next evolution of creative empowerment. Um, and really, what is this? If you could boil this down, this is everything about NFTs from concept to launch. Um, when are these sessions? They are Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.30 to 7 p.m. PST. So that's Pacific Standard Time. And make sure we get that in there. Um, and how? We have weekly discovery sessions and co-working sessions in the system and in the NFT lab together. And it's where that's in URL and IRL. So I will be hosting this. Um, a friend of mine, Sophia, has a really awesome uh, creative space that she manages right here in uh, Northeast Los Angeles. And she has given me the opportunity to meet there in person. So if you're an LA creative, if you're local and you want to hang out and do this with me in person, you can totally come down. Um, but for everyone else, it'll be digital and we will have replays that'll be available uh, the following days after every session. So here's a little bit about the course schedule and what you can expect. So week one is intro into the metaverse. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about the history of NFTs, what they were, where they're going, everything from rocks to loot crate. And in the lab, we'll talk about how do you get involved just in the communication. So making sure you've got a Twitter and you're following the folks that are really talking about the things that are, you're interested in or discords or what discords you should be interested in. Are you, you know, interested in fashion and luxury and fidgetal products? Maybe you should be in Luxo. Um, are you interested in the African diaspora and black musicians? Well, then you should probably be in Black Dave's discord. Um, but we want to be able to kind of usher you into the spaces around your curiosities. Week two, the metaverse basics. So just understanding how the basic universe operates, right? This is lore here. So 
what is blockchain tokens and wallets? What does that mean? Um, and then in the lab, if you haven't set these things up, we'll talk about setting up your wallet and your security, and we'll help you acquire your first token. Um, if these things are things that you already have, then we'll talk about some of the advanced features. So how can I protect myself? Um, you know, how should I use a VPN? How can I integrate a hardware wallet? Those things that can definitely take your security to the next level. Week three, we're going to talk about the markets. So what are the NFT formats? Why do people think NFTs are valuable and NFTs as creative investments? Um, then in the lab, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the markets. We're going to explore the open seas and the rareables. Um, and we're going to be able to acquire first NFT. So being able to find a piece of art that is worthwhile for you to invest in and you starting to identify for yourself, what are the things that makes investments significant? Week four, we're going to talk about the mechanics behind NFTs. So these are the smart contracts. These are the copyrights. These are the royalties. This is the gamification, right? These are all of those things. And then on Thursday, we are going to mint your own first NFT. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't have to be a project, but we want to show you how simple the process could be. And we want for you to just get over that hump and that fear of like, ah, let me know. I'm afraid to do that. No. We're going to do it. You're going to have your own NFT. And then in week five, we're going to have graduation. So class projects, you know, show that NFT that you minted. We're going to have a little bit of a launch party and we're planning on doing a mini conference. So having a few of the folks within our community that are really well versed in the space and have experience, you know, whether they're artists and have collections themselves or whether they help produce um or maybe they're like experts in some of the spaces uh, we talked about possibly getting one of the lawyers to come down and talk about creative ip uh that is going to happen uh on week five and uh that's the course schedule now it's important to note that this is just an installation so after you go through this you are more than welcome to take as many times as you want um but i think we believe that after you get through these basics then what you just need is the community and the resources and the support and just the updates to keep you going. You don't have to necessarily go through this process again. So we have a program that is a monthly $125 um, a monthly subscription. And that is to the accelerator program where all of the resources and all of the support that we're doing is happening around NFTs. You will still get access to that. You just don't have to go through the basics. So uh with that being said i want to dive into our upload for today and the upload is really simple if there was one thing that you could take away from today's call and you can share that what would that be and you know i'd love to get as many people as we can so we're going to keep it to about 30 seconds and um i'll model that so the one thing that i could take away from today's call and that is this community is really, really awesome. You know, the amount of support and resources and perspective that came through, and this is our first time doing this was wonderful. And just the ability for everyone to come in and chill and have awesome vibes and just bring the curiosity um, shows that our, our community truly needs uh, a space like this. And if there's one thing that I would take away from today's call it would be there is still a challenge around just understanding the fundamentals of Web3. And we really have to work on being able to break down the basics for our community, um, not only internally amongst creatives, but also for our clients, most importantly, because that's where the next huge opportunity is. And I am complete. Emerson, jump in. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. Uh, this is exciting, guys, because um, I've been fortunate enough to see the entire evolution of the web, like right from the very beginning. And web before the, the web 1.0, you know, the old DDS system. Um, so, it's been exciting to see it, but the potential this time is is huge. 
See, the, the web 1.0 uh, made information available to all and also established the technical infrastructure needed for, for what the web 2.0 will make. The web 2.0 connected us and, and the web 3.0 is basically now bringing us together with a bunch of ideas and the technical infrastructure ready for us to just do. And uh, that is honestly exciting. So uh, I'm down for this, excited to be part of it and uh, looking forward to the next session. So I'm EQ and I'm complete. Thank you, Thank you for sharing, man. Yeah, absolutely. Andrea. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm eating, <laughs> but um, I'm just so, I don't know, mind blown to see all the crazy projects that can come up on this. And I think when it comes to like technology, it's easy to get caught up on like the things that you can't do yet. But it's awesome to know that there's so many possibilities of collaborating with people who know and, you know, never be afraid to ask a question. And that's what I take and complete it. Thank you for that, Ava. I would like to say that um, um, it's it's amazing how we are all afraid to ask, and we have we 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 don't have to be afraid to ask uh, anything of, of of this world, like. Um, um, everyone is in, is getting involved like uh, more and more involved in this uh, web3 and nfts and you shouldn't have a, uh, scared you, you should you shouldn't be scared to ask uh, anything you know and it's a huge community and it's out there to 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 you to ask and and, and know know and learn. You know. That's my insight, and I'm I'm good and I'm complete. Very good, Ruth. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. And yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, one thing that we promote in this community is the the philosophy or the the mindset of unmute yourself own your voice, speak up, and ask questions. We're here for it. We have on that point. <laughs> on that point, I'll go next. Uh, I'll go with my upload. Uh, one thing that I took away is that, uh, you know, we spoke a lot and we had a lot of questions about the basics of NFT and what, how do I get into it? And what is it? Um, and what is Web3? Well, you know, one of the ways that I started jumping into this is just diving into Discord and not only to the systems Discord, uh, which we just shared the link there, Sergio, in the chat, but also um, other project Discords. Um, and if you follow Keone on Twitter, which I do, he's in a bunch of stuff. Um, so uh and you can follow uh some of us as well we've shared our our so our social media in the chats i mean just following other discords following other communities um opening up your metamask wallet uh just get, taking the the very basic steps to just to kind of like dipping your toes into into what this is that's how i got into it those were my basics that's just my experience but uh, from there, that opened up my mind into my ideas and what I want to do, what what I feel like are the possibilities. Um, so my name is Tino and I'm complete. Thank you, Tino. Iwana, were you coming up? Not necessarily. I was uh, a bit sad that there isn't uh, one button just to bring up everyone's face uh, today because I'm so grateful that so many people showed up and asked so many questions because uh, I always learn from others and I hope others learn from me. <laughs> I'm Ivana and I'm complete. Thank you. Learn and earn together. That's the goal. Adriana. 
Hi everyone, ¿cómo están? Bien, bien, ¿y tú? It's, it's good to be back, it's good to be back, I miss you a lot guys, so first of all, grateful for being here, seeing you again, it's, 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 it elevates my, my energy and pumps my heart, so I'm very, very grateful for that. For me, it's embracing unknown, it's sometimes it's, you are scared of what you don't know, but at the end, taking the risk and having community to support it embrace the future for us for everyone and it makes more easy to to overcome so yeah i believe in in love and i believe in intention and the system is that for me is love and intention and seeds of love and future for everyone to to live in abundance and to share with other each other our our authenticity And to embrace unknown because we we just are here to experience life. So I'm Adriana and I'm complete. Thank you, Adri. So glad to have you back with us. Themes, what's up? Hi. So mine is most likely my upload is most likely like just regular, I guess. Not really mm -hmm. about feels. Um, I'm just uploading what like Jose said in terms of clarity that this NFT it could be a process, but it is a contract. And it also conveys that your authenticity and trust is what is gonna keep you alive in this game. So, you know, uploading your, your NFTs and trying it out in regards to the process is one thing, but I think as a startup, as a creative, as an artist or whatever, it's really showing your authentic selves and also providing a product that you can stand behind as well. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited. Brian brought up a really spicy topic. Uh, are NFTs art? Ooh, great question and great point. Um, and I think you're alluding a little bit something to that. And so um, I think that may be the topic that we open up with. We are going to do another session. And it's going to be on Wednesday, and we're going to do it, uh, in, you know, so it's easier for our international folks. So that'll be at 11:30. And um, I'm really excited to have that convo. And Brian, we may have to have you as a panelist on that to talk about that question. Um, floor is open, guys. Let's get a couple more uploads before uh, we, we move on to the peace outs. All right. Well, then let's keep it moving. Um, Once again, guys, the NFT lab, if you guys sign up today, you'll get 50% off. Um, we start Tuesday, October 5th. So that's in about a week. Um, it's an IRL and URL. Um, it's 5.30 to 7 p.m. PST. We'd love to see you there. We'd love to get you onboarded into Web3 and just to help create a platform for you to grow. Um, the link is in the chat. So, uh, Go ahead and sign up now. It's not going to be $50 off for long. And uh, I'm just really grateful to have everybody here, for the community to be here, for us to represent. Um, you know, we're preparing to launch, y'all. And uh, we hope you're on board the enterprise as we take off. And we are the system. This is a system production here. Uh, we wouldn't be here without the community and, you know, This is our spirit animal and we just like to represent. Um, and then last but not least, for those of you guys still listening, we are tokenizing at the end of this month. And for everyone that is a member of our Discord, we'll automatically get an allotment for free. For being there, for participating, for being one of the OG members. And we would love to give all the tokens out. You get a token, you get a token. Yes, you right now, you can get a token if you hop into our Discord before the end of the month. So guys, um, you know, I say this with gratitude um, and humility. You know, I'm just thankful to be able to kind of pivot in this way with you guys as a community. Um, super, super thankful for Jose and Mary and Barrett and Monique and, you know, the leaders that I've kind of paved the way for me to be able to get back to the community like this. And um, I just want to remind you guys that you guys are limited only by your imagination. 
You guys are more powerful than you know. And through community, we can do anything. So with that, take care, y'all. Peace. Have an awesome Sunday night. Thank you so much for being here, all of you. Thank you all. You guys were incredible. Peace, everyone. Bye. Peace, y'all. Ciao. Ciao. La revedere. Wait, what? <laughs> that means How do I say it? <laughs> it means see you again. La revedere. Say or the, it again, or the, or, the or the very short version, pa. <laughs> pa. Ta. Ta. That's something Ta. I can handle. Ta. 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 <laughs> Ciao. Zaijian. Cheers. Peace out, Go Ciao. Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Rest, folks. <laughs> Have a nice week. See you soon. See you on Wednesday. Bye. Peace, y'all. Bye. Peace. Peace.